Quite possibly the R5C's biggest limitation is its power consumption. The LPE6NH battery, the best option that Canon had at the time of release, can only power the camera for between 40 and 60 minutes, depending on the resolution and frame rate that you're working at. Now, on top of that, the power budget is actually so tight with the E6NHs that some functionality, such as autofocus, is disabled when shooting in the highest power modes, such as 8K at 60 frames per second. And of course, older LPE6 series batteries are even more limited. Now, to address this problem, most of us R5C users simply power our cameras externally using either a dummy battery or, my preference, USB power delivery. In fact, since getting my R5C, and as the USB power options in the cinema and camera space have evolved, my power solutions have also evolved from basically using a bulky standard Anchor USB power delivery battery pack to a much lighter and more compact small rig NPF to USB PD battery adapter plate. All of this in an effort to get a lighter overall package for day-to-day -day use that still had a ton of runtime. However, with the recent release of Canon's EOS R5 Mark II, Canon has also introduced a new LPE6 series battery, the LPE6P. Now, the E6P maintains the same form factor as the previous E6 batteries and can be charged in any LPE6 charger, including Canon's LCE6 charger. More importantly, they can be used in most, if not all, cameras that use LPE6 series batteries, though Canon does say some may require firmware updates to work properly. In fact, outwardly, aside from changes to the labeling on the battery, the E6P looks and feels like any other E6 series battery. However, the E6Ps are different. While Canon doesn't publish the exact details of what's changed internally, something definitely has. It's not the voltage. Though the E6Ps now list an 8.4 volt maximum charge voltage on the label, that voltage has been true of all previous E6 series batteries as well. Moreover, the E6Ps are still 7.2 volt nominal voltage batteries, at least according to the label. Likewise, these batteries aren't any higher capacity than their NH series predecessors. Still holding just 2,130 milliamp hours or 16 watt hours of power, just the same as the NHs. So then what's changed? Or at least my best guess on what's changed has to do with the maximum safe discharge current that these can provide. Either Canon and Panasonic are using a chemistry that's more power focused, which delivers more current with less voltage drop, or they've designed the batteries to have a higher discharge rate or a higher safe discharge rate. Either way, something's different. So the question is then why does this matter? Well, anybody who's ever worked with batteries knows that there are several factors that affect a battery's output voltage. Three big ones are the discharge current, so the more current the battery has to supply, the more its voltage will drop under that load. The temperature, the colder the battery is, the slower the chemical reactions that are going on that provide actual power from the battery, and the lower the output voltage will, as a result, be. And finally, of course, state of charge. As more energy is used from the battery, the lower the battery voltage will become. Now for a lithium ion battery, the cell curve looks something like this. It starts at a full charge voltage of about 4.2 volts, drops quickly for a little bit, and then drops more steadily until it reaches a point near depletion where the battery then will quickly drop to the cutoff voltage of around three volts. Now as an aside, going past that three volt cutoff voltage will damage the battery cells permanently. So you don't really wanna do that. Now, of course, since our LPE6 batteries have two cells wired in series, a 2S configuration, as they would call it in the battery world, these voltages would be doubled, hence the 7.2 and 8.4 volts that we see on the label. Now, on the other side of this equation, our camera still needs the same power to do its thing, regardless of what's happening to the battery and its voltage. Since power is just voltage times current, to maintain the same power output as the voltage drops, the current draw must increase. 
And this is where a battery capable of a higher discharge current makes the difference. To keep the batteries operating properly, the R5C's firmware manages camera's feet, the camera's features and powers off the camera as a whole, depending on what it can safely draw from the battery at any given time or when the battery gets depleted. Now on the R5C, that firmware has been written to prioritize certain functions like actually recording in the most power demanding situations with enough margin that the camera will continue to work and not drop out in the worst case scenario. That is the maximum voltage draw or the maximum current draw when the camera is operating at its zero degrees Celsius or 32 degree Fahrenheit minimum operating temperature and as the battery depletes. Now it does this by of course disabling other power consuming systems like the lens's autofocus motor, the multifunction shoe's power to keep the camera's power consumption under control and at a level that Canon can actually influence. So what does all this have to do with batteries and especially the new E6P batteries? Well, most consumer electronics and their batteries are designed for a 1C discharge rate. That means that they can be safely discharged at a rate that would use up their capacity in one hour. In the case of an LPE6NH, that discharge rate would be about 12 or 2,130 milliamps or 2.13 amps. At just above the six volt volt cutoff voltage, that would translate to the battery being able to provide around 12.78 watts. That's not anywhere near enough to supply the 15 watts that the R5C needs for 8K60 recording with all of the bells and whistles. In fact, to maintain 15 watts of output power at a 1C discharge rate, the E6NH batteries cannot have their volt voltage drop below seven volts. And that ends up being at just about 50% of their capacity at that discharge rate, hence the limitations we see. So the question then is, do the E6Ps solve this problem and do we get more recording time out of them? Now the short answer to that is actually just yes. Whatever changes Canon and Panasonic have made to the chemistry have boosted at least the recording times or operating times on the R5C when using these batteries. In my typical configuration, which is shooting at 2K full frame at 24 frames per second with HEVC compression, putting a freshly charged E6NH in my camera will give me an estimated 60 minutes of recording time. Testing that out in practice, I see just over that with about 62 minutes of continuous recording if I start the camera recording immediately when I put the battery in. Dropping an E6P into the camera increased the estimated recording time to around 86 minutes. That's a 43% increase just using the new batteries. Now, I also did the same test and just recorded a long recording to see how the camera performed. And I see just slightly better than the estimated recording performance or the estimated runtime performance. My camera in the test came in at just shy of 90 minutes or actually 89 minutes and 40 seconds of continuous recording off a fresh E6P battery. Now, unfortunately, while I would like to have repeated these tests at 8K and 60 frames a second to see if there is a bigger disparity between the two batteries under a much higher power situation, I simply don't have a large enough CF Express card to record long enough for that test to actually work. However, while the E6Ps can deliver more power longer and give you more recording time, unfortunately, they don't also enable the full functionality of the camera and lens and autofocus and uh, multifunction shoe modules when shooting at 8K and 60 frames a second. So if that's your target recording mode, you will still need to use external power if you want all the bells and whistles. So that just leaves us with the big question. Is the E6P the power solution that we have been waiting for for the R5C? Well, as with so many things, the answer to that one is it depends. One thing you'll always have to remember is that the R5 on the R5C is that it never drops into either a low power mode or auto powers off when you have turned it on to video mode. So whether you're recording or not, you are still consuming a similar amount of power. So the runtime estimates that we see on the camera are not just for recording, but for when the camera is on as a whole. 
Additionally, if you are trying to shoot at 8K60 or any of the other high power modes that are limited, using the E6Ps is not gonna enable autofocus or the lost functionality, so they aren't going to help you there. On the other hand, the 40 to 50% longer runtime per battery may be all you need to get over the runtime anxiety and be able to leave that big external battery at home. So the question that I wanna tackle then is what am I doing? Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough E6Ps to feed both my R5 Mark II and my R5C yet. I do plan on replacing my E6Ns and NHs as I can and when I can with E6Ps simply because my old batteries are getting old and long in the tooth and the E6Ps do deliver more record and shooting performance. Unfortunately, this also means that I can't really do the kind of practical extended use testing that I would like to do to be able to talk about this more completely. Now that said, with hours of power from either USB PD or an NPF battery, basically unlimited in many situations, I've also developed what you might call a bad habit. I leave my camera on between shots more often than not. Now, while an E6P would probably give me enough runtime to still be able to do that and get away with it in the times that I'm shooting, the reality is also better power discipline would like me, likely get me there with the existing E6NHs as well. So the short of it is, if you are not shooting at 8K60 and you don't need hours upon hours of recording, the E6Ps really do look like a solid upgrade. That said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. Also, if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Finally, if you'd like to help and support this channel, you can help us for free by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and leaving a comment with your experiences. Likewise, you can support us by hitting that thanks button or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.